All right, Brian Cromer here again. My War Creative Company of Heroes. I just want to come back and do a review. Uh, if you're not familiar with me from perhaps the Discord server, I'm a backer who was so enthusiastic about the game, jumped in on the Discord, saw that there was a TTS mod, and tried to help out where I can. So if you're familiar with me from there, if not, you're welcome to join the Discord. I mean, it's awesome people playing on Tabletop Simulator and uh, having a good time. So if you can't find someone, especially in these strange times that we're in, come on and join us. Plenty of us, even if you're new, more than willing to help you out, teach you the rules. Alright, so I just want to go over the review. I, I, essentially, I've played about now, <laughs> this might sound crazy to some, because just people are just getting it now, but about 25 to 30 games myself, and then I've watched about the same amount, so about 30. And I just want to give a good review of the game. Hopefully, uh, you know, those of you who uh, don't have their copy set are enthusiasts, you know, about the game, enthusiastic. Or those who are, you know, considering it. Uh, I know they're trying to do a 1.5 sometime, perhaps later this year. So if you're on the fence, maybe this video can help push you one way or the other. Alright, so let's get started. So let's start with, first of all, the, the big, the big uh, you know, where I came in. So where I came in is I was, uh, I kind of, you know, ran into the Kickstarter page. Uh, you know, I was kind of active skimming Kickstarter at the time. So I didn't really see any advertisements for it, so hopefully, you know, next time if for 1.5 they can get a little bit more advertisements. But I stumbled on it, and I actually, strangely enough, was not familiar with the video game. Uh, I'm a big uh, real-time strategy, you know, RTS game player of other video games, but I never played Company of Heroes. So I kind of, you know, skimmed through the page, and what, what kind of reached out to me was they were trying to reach out a little bit to the economic side. Uh, I'm not really big, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of two sides, <laughs> I know this might sound strange, but I like games with heavy amount of conflict or very little conflict, I don't really like things in the middle. So this is kind of obviously more towards the, the former there. And what I was looking at is I liked the, the resource management, it's kind of what reached out to me, and then the more deterministic combat. Uh, so let's let's start there. So uh, you know, I actually played the video game after backing the Kickstarter. I actually purchased the video game, and I do enjoy the video game quite a bit. I think I prefer the board game more. I'm more of a you know nowadays I prefer the board games. Uh, I know that sound might sound strange to you, some of you guys, but so what this is able to do, I feel for obviously I can't speak for the people that were video game fans first. But I, from playing it after, I do say I do feel like it replicates the capture points very well, and it definitely has the the combat is, is you know fairly deterministic, so it kind of replicates the you know the video game pretty well. And then the the one thing that isn't as deterministic is the high explosive you know mortar damage and stuff. So I think it replicates the video game pretty well. Uh, I'd say that, but but the video game is about an hour long. It kind of gives a nice arc. I'd say the arc is pretty close there for the board game. So, I, you know, I'd say for those of the fans of the video game coming from that uh, side of things, I think that they'll be pleasantly surprised with this. Now, let's go with the gameplay itself. Uh, let's start there. Uh, the, or let's go on to there. The, the gameplay, I'd have to say, uh, I'm just going to flat out say right now, I'm rating this game about 9.5. So, obviously, I'm, I'm very ex you know, excited about it. Played it quite a bit. Obviously, if you play that many games, you probably are going to be rating it pretty high. But I'd have to say it hits all the targets that I was ho hoping it would. Uh, I don't think it is exactly what I thought. I think it is a little bit less deterministic than I thought. And oddly enough, even though I like that deterministic combat in games, I actually find it hits the right balance pretty much. Uh, the key thing is, you know, with the high explosive, it's kind of the most variable. But if you focus on your anti-infantry and armor, you know, AP damage, armor penetration, you know, anti-tanks, it is a good balance there. It's more about moving on around the board and getting to the key capture points in the game and holding them, really, just the key victory points, just like the video game. So I think it, it strikes that very well. Uh, I don't really have... I, I know they're working on some errata and trying to improve things for 1.5. Again, if you join the Discord, you can more than free, you know, give your feedback and your input, and I'm sure they're they're more than willing to, you know, listen and try to improve the game as much as possible. So, again, more eyes on it, all these backers getting their game. Hopefully we can make 1.5 as good as possible, but 
gameplay, pretty happy. And let's swing around to fun. I think the fun factor is definitely there. It's got the table presence. I, you know, I didn't really show it off, but there's other unboxing videos that kind of show off the train packs, one and two. Even if you don't get that, the tanks, I'd have to say general feedback from, you know, the Discord is people are, might be a little bit disappointed in the infantry, uh, but the tanks themselves are, they kind of get that good detail. The infantry is a bit on the smaller side, so I think once you go that small, it's really hard to get the detail, but they have good edges, and I think if you're especially into painting, they can, you can kind of make them pop. Tanks are fantastic, though, and that's, I mean, that's probably why you're interested in this game, at least partially, is you know, love World War II and uh, the tanks. Yeah, I didn't have a World War II combat game, so I was kind of on the fence with that, and then I'm like, okay, now this is my World War II combat game. So, yeah, to wrap it up, I, I would say for, if you're on the fence, uh, definitely probably consider getting Tabletop Simulator, like if you're considering the 1.5 uh, campaign that's coming out. Uh, I would consider that route, especially if you already own it. Uh, you can get the mod, download it for free, try it out. Many, again, many of us are willing to, you know, point you in the right direction there. And yeah, it's all done. So I mean, it's it, you know, seeing what improvements they come for 1.5 is very exciting. But it's it's pretty solid. Uh, the balance, I'd say, I, I guess I didn't touch on that in the gameplay, but I'll swing back to the balance. I'd say with the rod, it's pretty good. There was a couple of rough edges, I think, uh, and the, you know, the released 1.0, whatever you want to call it, what was shipped to backers, but not really. I mean, it, overall, the balance is is pretty good. Uh, and then there's a lot of customization too with the system, even without World Builder Pack. The different maps. There's four maps, which is a lot of content. I mean, I barely, you know, after all these games, I'm barely just getting into the World Builder Pack stuff now. Uh, I'd say the original maps, a lot of different things, the mission booklet, a lot of different scenarios. There's, you know, plenty for one panel, two panel, three panel. I would recommend just to, you know, quit, quip in here that uh, kind of like for 1v1s, I'd recommend two panel. And then for 2v2s, three panels. Uh, it seems to be a good balance there. And then probably for 2v2s, you might want to go up to 18 victory points, but 15 is good as well for, you know, either 1v1 or 2v2 if you want a quicker game. Uh, so, yeah, I think that touches on all that stuff. But overall, I'd have to say uh, the phenomenal production, I know it's delayed a bit as most Kickstarters are, and especially with these crazy times that we're in, you know, it's a little, probably a little bit more understandable. They did, uh, you know, adjust a lot of things after the Kickstarter, you know, was successful. They uh, successfully funded. They did switch the buildings out. They did upscale us a bit to that one one hundredth, and I, I'd, I'm definitely glad they did that. Uh, so yeah, it looks nice. And uh, you know, if you want to see more videos, like can uh, let me know, and I can probably show more gameplay. Help out those beginners if you want. Uh, I do want to do a later video. Uh, probably what my my personal recommendations are for one point five. But, no, I'm very excited, very glad to have it, and hopefully you enjoyed this video. See ya. Have, been fu have fun playing the game. I actually wanted to come back and say one last thing. I was actually on the fence with the real-time strategy aspect. I, I, you know, I, a lot of games that, you know, mention real-time, a lot of board gaming from the side that, you know, they kind of frown upon that. A lot of people aren't excited about that. But I have to say, they did a phenomenal job with real time. So even if you're on the fence, like if you're a backer already, you've played it, and you're kind of on the fence like I was, like, eh, do I want to try real time? It is a thousand times better. It just makes the game feel alive, and then you kind of live with your mistakes. So someone like me, I'm, I suffer from a lot of analysis paralysis. I have trouble making my decisions. I'm a heavy Euro gamer, and you know I, I like to hem and haw on what decisions to make. And this game really has that. And it's fun playing that way too, but the real-time strategy, like once I want that, I, I really <laughs> I really don't want to go back to the uh, turn base. It's just phenomenal. The command points kind of tie in well with that. You you know, once you make your, you know, each unit moving up to three, real-time, you just one at a time. It just, it, it gives you that reaction that I don't feel like turn base quite does. And then it definitely incre it, you know cuts down on that game time. The game is already decent. I'd have to say once you're familiar with the rules, but the 60 to 90. But real time really does get it tight, especially if you want to have a timer. You know, I, I actually recommend the sand timers are fine, but I actually recommend like a phone, uh, setting the three minutes, putting it upside down so nobody can see it. 
So that kind of makes you want to mentally just play naturally, if that makes sense, where you just want to move your pieces and you're not waiting till the end to kind of see what they're doing. You kind of just have to go along and just play. Uh, so I think that works out pretty well. And then I'd recommend doing the timer for the supply phase as well. So it just keeps the game moving at a good clip. Obviously, there's a little break during the damage phase where you're plotting your damage out, but it moves quickly. It's a lot of fun. And yeah, I have a blast playing it. So definitely recommend giving real time mode a shot. It's fantastic. All right. We enjoyed the video.